guys, welcome back. I'm going to sand down the Stargate cabinets and reprimer them tonight because the truck that I'm painting, the inside of the doors were never primered. So I need to primer those anyways. So I figured if I'm gonna primer the inside of those two doors, I might as well get these sanded down real quick and spray everything at the same time, just so I don't have to mix up two different times, two different days, and we can just kind of knock it all out at one time. Um, Pole position still here. So I covered it in plastic real good. I'm waiting on the battery ram still. So I ordered a battery ram online from a, a, an electronics place. And um, it turns out it literally was only 45 minutes from my house. So you would think last week when I ordered it, it would be here in a day or two. Well, instead of it coming from Menor, Ohio, and coming to me in Ashtabula, Ohio, they sent it out to Akron. So they went an hour and a half the total opposite way from Menor, and now it's coming back this way. So I don't know when I'm gonna get it. I figured it would have been here today, but it's not here, it didn't come in the mail, so hopefully tomorrow it comes. So I'd like to get that battery ram in there, and I took pictures of the dip switch settings for pole position so we can uh, move those around and get them to where they need to be, because it's definitely, uh, the dip switches are definitely off on that. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of um, the glazing putty. I'll show you what I use. I always repeat myself and show what I use in case somebody missed it in a previous video or somebody is just new to the channel. At least they can see what I'm using and not have to go back in a bunch of videos if they don't want to. Um, so before I start sanding these cabinets, there are some nicks here and there that I wanna fill in first. The reason why I like filling them in first is Yes, you're supposed to rough up your primer before you put some filler on it, okay? But I'm only putting it in these little tiny nick areas. I'm not, I'm just spreading it tight. I'm not letting it stay on the outer surface. So I'm not worried about it. The reason why I like to do it beforehand is that's a real pain in the butt to try to sand that. And then once you sand that, now you're gonna have sanding dust in there that you gotta try to get out so that the filler would stick. I've had better luck and more success with little areas like that and little pinholes and stupid things like like these these little tiny little holes right here that were in the plywood filling those in now before i sand helps me because then i am sanding the surface if i sand the cabinet first and then go fill these in i gotta sand it again in this area so i'm really gonna burn through all the primer at that point by putting the filler on first then when i sand it's all gonna sand uniformly you know, you know what I'm saying? So I won't be burning through just that one area because I'm trying to work on getting this out of there. So, all right, um, let's get some of this stuff mixed up and then we'll go around and fill in any nicks that we see. And then uh, we can start sanding it down. Um, I'm not gonna do a lot of videoing on the sanding. Just show you briefly. I'm gonna be using 180 grit to sand it down and I'm gonna be primering over the 180 grit. I am not going to um, go any smoother than 180 because we are primering it again. So I'm using this Dolphin Glaze by u -Pull. The part number is UP0714. I believe I got it on Amazon or eBay. I'm not sure. But if you go online and, and look up the u -Pull, UP0714, You'll be able to find it and look around until you find a good price on it. Maybe I, you know, I might even have gotten it from Summit Racing. I really, truly just don't remember, and I just mixed up too much because I'm talking. But, oh well. So, we'll get this stirred up here. And remember not to stir it. And then, oh, you know what? Also, knead your hardener. So, knead it back and forth so that there's no liquid coming out when you go to uh, use it. Because if there's liquid coming out, then it's not mixed up correctly. So that's an important thing you wanna make sure that you do. Actually, I need to leave this out because I gotta take it tomorrow to a, I'm painting a bar. I built a bar front at a restaurant and I am painting it with automotive paint. So I got it all built between yesterday and today. Um, now I gotta do the body work on it tomorrow morning. I gotta get there at like six in the morning before they even open because I got to get it body worked and filler primed tomorrow. 
and then fingers crossed that the paint comes by the end of the week so I can go there at like five in the morning on Saturday and paint it. So if you guys are interested in seeing me uh, paint a wooden bar that I built with automotive paint, you can check out my other channel because I'm putting videos on my other channel at Troy's Restoration 2.0. So if you look that up, you'll be able to see that. I just did a real quick short video today on it. I did not video anything really of me building it. But let's come over here now. And we are gonna just start filling in these. I'm not gonna video me doing the whole thing. So this little nick right here, I'm gonna go like that and I'm gonna swipe it this way. Any leftover residue is just gonna uh, sand right off. So always swipe it one way and go the other direction. If you keep swiping it the same direction, you'll actually dig it out of there. Um, so I gotta kind of really look around and see where my marks are at. But there's a bunch on this right here. So that's what I'm going to do. Just go around and grab all these spots that I see, and then I'll be back to start sanding it. Okay, I filled in all the spots that I saw. Doesn't mean I didn't miss any. Um, so now we're, I'm going to show you, I'm going to sand it with 180 with my DA sander. Somebody had asked me the other day, why don't I hook my sander up to the vacuum? I always hook my sander up to the vacuum, unless I'm sanding something outside then I don't waste the vacuum on sanding outside because it just blows away and I don't feel like wasting more bags inside the sander or inside the vacuum if I don't have to. But anyways, if anybody's curious, this is made by Indasa um, and it can handle two hoses and uh, two different uh, um, hose assemblies and two airlines. And what it does is when you put it on an um, automatic, it automatically turns on once the air hose starts drawing air through it for the uh, sander. So, or you can turn it on manually where it will just be on the whole time. And you can also plug in a corded sander too. So it has a outlet right here. And if you use this outlet, the vacuum will turn on when the uh, sander turns on. So if anybody is curious, this is the system I use. This is their hose and everything that comes with it. Actually, I think you have to buy everything extra. That nothing, nothing is free with this stuff, believe me. It's expensive, but the dust that it keeps down, you really can sand and not use a dust mask. I always wear a dust mask just to be on the safe side. Um, but let me show you here just for a minute how I'm gonna sand these down. I know I've showed you guys in the past, but anybody that's new that hasn't seen it, I'd wanna at least show them. Um, and I've gotta put my mask on still, but I'll do that afterwards because I'm only gonna show you for a second here. So just basically, you want to keep your sander flat on your panel. Don't start digging like this or this or this because you see that little imperfection, you start going at it like that. It's all you're doing is creating a big uh, mess up right in your cabinet and you're going to see that when you paint it. So always keep this thing as flat as possible. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Or turn the air on would probably help. There's no dust in the air. Whatever dust this doesn't suck up goes to the floor. And then you could just blow it out afterwards. So these are the sanding discs made by 3M. And if you look closely, you can see through it. It's just a mesh sandpaper. And then this has a ton of holes in the pad. And it uh, sucks up the sawdust. Does a really, really good job. But let me show you here for a minute. So there's little imperfections still like these. But I didn't fill those because I knew that those were going to sand out. So let me show you. Okay. Those are gone. You can see them still, but they're gone. The reason why you can still see those is because um, halfway through primering, I had to open up another gallon of primer. Sometimes when you open up another gallon of primer, the shade of gray might be a little different. So clearly this 
outer layer gray was a lighter gray than the first gallon that I used underneath it. But you cannot feel that or anything. It's perfectly smooth. So I'm going to go around, sand the backs, the tops, the front, sides, everything. Get these completely sanded down. Come back, show you what they look like. And then we are going to get them in the spray booth and primer them. And a couple nicks here I missed, which those are not going to sand out. I got to get mix up a little bit more filler. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, they're all sanded down. I found a couple other little spots that I didn't care for, like right here. And just a couple spots Then I'm going over it. They look real rough right now. They, there's just sand through spots and everything. These cabins were extremely rough shape as far as like the plywood cracking and stuff. I believe they call it planking or something like that when the plywood literally just starts drying out to the point where it just puts cracks in the uh, top veneer. So this next primering, they should look really good. Um, I sanded them down um, really good. So we should be good to go with that. Um, the guy that owns this one, cut the two back doors. So if I have room in the spray booth, I'm gonna put the two back doors in there and uh, put some primer on those. I still gotta drill the holes for the hinges and stuff, but I can at least, actually no, I gotta do some routering on it too. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, well, yeah, I could probably primer it even if I have to router it. Cause I have to router the two doors because they overlap each other. The, um, the bottom door has a rabbit on the outside and the upper door has a rabbit on the inside. So when you lock the bottom door, the top one slides down behind the, bottom door and then it locks up here so yeah maybe i just will primer them because i don't think it's a big deal if i just uh router them afterwards and where the router is it's still going to get painted black it'll just be a little bit rougher but you're not going to see it once the two panels are closed so i'm going to go ahead and get this filler spots to dry for a couple minutes i'm going to sand them down i'm going to get these blown off and get them in the spray booth and then i'll show you the products and everything that i use to uh primer these cabinets um, I still need to cover up these tubes. I did get some overspray on them. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let that be on there for now. I'll get overspray on them again, and then I'll lacquer thinner them all down and cover them before I paint the cabinets black. Actually, the fronts of the cabinets black. This one's gonna get the whole entire cabinet black because it's getting side art, so I'm not worried about that. This one obviously is getting stencils, so I need to paint the sides red. So basically, how I do the stencils is I get the whole sides done, all stenciled up. Then I mask off the sides with masking tape and paper, and then I paint the black. The reason why I do it that way, and everybody, people have commented and say, why would you put the stencils on and then spray the black and run the risk of getting black overspray on your stencils? Just tape it off good. And it's so much easier to tape the side flat panel off completely than to try to tape all that off in there from overspray. So... That's how I do it, and I've had really good success with it. So, all right, I'll be back. Okay, cabinets are in the spray booth, blown off, wiped off. Um, I only have to primer one inside of one door. The other one's already done. And then there's the two pieces of plywood for the back doors. So we're going to mix up some primer now and then start putting it on. I'm just going to show putting on one coat, and then I'll do the other coat off camera, and then I'll come back and we'll do a close-up look at the cabinet and see how it turned out, how they turned out. They should turn out really good. Um, I sanded them a lot. So so the, once again, this is the primer I use from Summit Racing. It's 2K urethane primer um, using gray. And the part number is SUMUP220G, or maybe OG. I'm not sure if that's an O or a Z, or a O or a zero. And then this is the activator I use. I'm using medium, so it dries quicker. SUMUP101Q means Q means quart. And then I put a little bit of reducer in there as well, which this is their summit reducer, which is SUMUP401G. G means gallon. So those are the products that I use. If anybody's interested, you can order them right from Summit Racing. Uh, it's a four to one mix four parts primer, one part hardener, and you can add 10 to 20% reducer to thin it out a little bit so it sprays a little smoother for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my first batch here. Go out there and we are gonna get a coat on the cabinets and then I'm gonna do the door off camera. Now, um, I use these disposable cups with these disposable lids 
but when you use these disposable lids with the filler primer, the 2K primer, you gotta take the strainer out that's inside of it. It has a built-in strainer. You wanna rip that out of there because if you don't, it'll clog up instantly. So, all right, I'm gonna get this mixed up and we'll go out there and get a coat of primer on. Gonna do the other cam, other uh, cabinet off camera. It's a little tight in here, so let me get these primed with a couple of coats, and then we'll take a good look at them. Okay, they are drying. Um, they turned out really good. They are really smooth. I think I found like two or three nicks that I have to touch up before I sand it. So I'm uh, happy with how these look. It should paint really nicely. Got the door primer, and I got the back doors for the uh, that one that's going to be a Tetris primer. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is the inside of those car doors. I have to paint satin black. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the Tetris cabinet the same time I paint the uh, insides of those doors. I'm gonna be spraying satin black anyways. I might as well just knock it out so that both doors, car doors, and the one cabinet will be painted. Um, so before I do that, I'll have to obviously sand that cabinet down, uh, do those little bit of routering I need to do to the back doors, and then we can get all that satin stuff painted. 
Uh, my cabinet will sit a little bit longer until I have some time, probably be about a week or so before I get to spraying the stencils on the, my Stargate cabinet and then doing the black on that one. Uh, so pretty much that's going to end this. Nothing real fancy, just a quick video on uh, sanding and reprimering the cabinets. Um, if you guys are liking what you see, please like, subscribe, share, hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, we are almost ready for stencils. I'll see you later, guys.